Hello everyone, I am Pyro Falcon, and this is Hard Space Shipbreaker, which is a very strange title. Uh, if you're watching this on release day, you may be wondering where Monster Rancher is. I had a family emergency that I could not get away from. My apartment, as you can see, is just a mess behind me. I've let a lot of things go, but, uh, and in fact, the reason I'm not doing Monster Rancher or another staple of the channel is because I don't have enough time right now to commit to a full recording session. But this game, Hard Space Shipbreaker, has become my game of the year of 2022. No exaggeration, it is that damn good. And I'm going to talk more about my silly history with this game once we get started. But we're going to start a new game here with limited mode, which means we only get to revive 30 times. I would go to no revival hard mode, but uh, I, I blather a lot, so I'm not entirely sure how well my reaction time and paying attention-ishness is going to help. That was English. Humankind has industrialized much of the solar system. Earth has deteriorated into a place of squalor and decay. In orbit, a new breed of worker has emerged. The Shipbreaker. The labor is extremely dangerous, but for a select few, the hazard pay is worth the risk. That's so stylish that they faded everything out other than the words. The Shipbreaker. So cool. So cool! Alright. I'm gonna gush about the art of this game, and I don't just mean the graphics, I mean this. This is us browsing our computer, and we've got a bunch of emails on the left that are talking about payments that are due and all sorts of terrible things. On the right, we see that there's a bunch of food shortage. And hey, we've got a pop-up that our application has been taken, what with the Shipbreaker uh, program and the such. It's great environmental storytelling. You don't need to have a dude going, In a world where shit has hit the fan and it's hard to get a bag of rice for less than $30 at the grocery store, one lone person tries to get a job. Like, you don't need any of that when you have good environmental storytelling. This is good. Ugh. This is good environmental storytelling. Ooh. Haven't drank, drank enough coffee yet. Hey, look, coffee. Anyway, so we got some stuff. We need to finalize our employment, which is fine. Um, no, I love how it says profanity and or anti-corporate slang and jargon is not accepted. I wonder if there's actually like some sort of filter. I, the profanity filter makes sense because there's a uh, there's a leaderboard, but I wonder what else you can do there. Um, but we're just going to go with Pyro Falcon. Oh, because of my other file. Um... Pyro Falcon 2. Why not? I'll be lazy. Um, so, yeah, you see down there, we only have 30 spares, which is 30 spare bodies in case we die. That's fine. I haven't even used 30, I don't believe, in my main save. And we are voice one. Just some dude, I think. Yeah, some dude. Uh, inverted. Okay. Okay. Meal preference, this doesn't matter either. Last time I went with chicken, because chicken sounds good. Chicken actually sounds good now, but we'll go with plastic-free meal preference today. Please agree to each statement. I have no criminal record in the Terran or Martian zones. A record in the Jovian frontier is acceptable. Yeah, I'm not a criminal. I'm not a member of and have never associated with the workers' union or another labor or interest. I have completed my annual medical exam and have been cleared of having McCullough's lung. I have no commercial or real estate interest on Luna, in the asteroid belt, or in the nation state of Arizona. I will bring a positive attitude and problem-solving mindset to work every day. <laughs> I tried at Walmart, and that shit stopped after about three years. I understand and accept the health risks associated with long-term exposure to a Vanderwall's fe field. Oh, this is why I'm coming back slowly, folks. I will vote for Chancellor Chun Jong in the Pan American Senate election. The thing with good satire is that it's very close to what would be in real life. I don't think any of you doubt that... If certain things go the way they want to go in the real world, we're going to have to sign away to corporations who we're going to vote for. That will be bad, but 
Anyway, we're gonna- oh god, it's like buying a song on friggin' iTunes. Uh, one of these days, though, I'm legit gonna read that, because it's full of hilarity. Um, so this is great, we're gonna skip training. Um, I don't need the tutorial today. But let's get started. After this ad! And we're back! That was an awkward pause if you weren't- or if you were on premium, but that's fine. All right, Hard Space Shipbreaker, here we go. Love this opening cutscene, love the music, love everything about this game. So, I guess over this I'll talk a little bit about my history since nothing else is happening and I don't want to get dinged for a content ID. So, Hard Space Shipbreaker is a blue collar simulator with you as the shipbreaker. Nice slam poetry by a little girl. I pray to the stars and heaven above. It's so good. To return my daddy to those he loves. There comes a time when he and death meet. Bless the next cutter that takes his seat. This is so good. I love this music. Ah. Oh. Firefly, the TV show, seemed to marry the concept between Old West and sci-fi, which was, uh, for a long time, said it could not be done because they kind of covered the same similar subjects of outlaws and being in an untamed frontier. And yet, ever since Firefly, it has uh, worked, combining the Old West and, uh, or at least Western, the untamed frontier and sci-fi. And, uh... It's- it's always- it is always, in my opinion, put to good use. I mean, obviously, you can do anything wrong in a genre, but it's- that marriage is hard to screw up, and in the hands of anyone even halfway competent, it's always a wonderful setting, and this- this is beyond halfway competent. This is like 130% competent. So, I first saw this game on Steam and thought it was up my alley, but at the time I couldn't really afford it and I wasn't 100% sure that I was going to enjoy the game, so I held off on it. And then uh, Squirrel Hog, one of my mods, gifted me Game Pass, and right now Hard Space Shipbreaker is on Game Pass, so I'm like, hell yeah, let's give it a try. Can't be the worst thing. Uh, even if it sucks, I can just whatever, at least it didn't cost me any money. But I played it, and then I played nothing but it for about five days straight. This game is damn good. And don't worry about what I'm talking over, this part isn't important. I will shut up in a second, I promise. But I will say, this kind of video training nonsense, this is a common thing. Uh, when I worked at Walmart, uh, we called them CBLs, which stands for Computer Based Learning, I believe? And we had to sit and watch these kinds of videos, and in fact, actually, when we were first hired, we still have to watch what I consider a propaganda video about Walmart, where it tells you about all the wonderful things it does, its history as a business, and so on. Not all the information is bad, but it's also, like, kind of annoying to sit through. It would be like if I required my moderators before they got to enforce moderating duties, to just sit and listen to me prattle about myself for two hours, talking about what a wonderful YouTuber I am and how I'm going to change the landscape of the internet. Like, it's dumb, and it's stupid, and 99% of the people who went into Walmart couldn't give a shit less. They just needed the paycheck. So here's our CEO, Kalissa, wishing us luck because the Lynx Corporation is wonderful and has changed everything for the better, and it's lovely. So I want a fresh start. I will begin genetic extraction, not in the fun way, in order to work for Lynx. Oh, God. Observation complete. To finalize onboarding, your genetic sequence will now be extracted for use with the Lynx Everwork Asset Replacement Program. Don't worry. Pain levels during extraction are largely tolerable. Largely. Yeah. Ah! As outlined in section 31 of your employment agreement, the process of genetic extraction will destroy your original body. That's nice, I wasn't too attached to it! Now. Oh, God! Oh, 
Oh god, it's like the last time I ate at Wendy's. You're welcome, as my body dies. Oh, existential. I could really have an existential crisis about this. If our consciousness is ripped out of our body and placed in a new identical body, did we actually die? Try not to think about it, because existential crises always keep me up at night. But our asset replacement was successful. Congratulations, it's now safe to die. Up to 30 times. Okay. And now the fees. We have our new job, folks, but, uh, the fees really piled up on this one. It's like my student loan. $1.2 billion in debt that we have to work off. This also seems to be, like, a thing where corporations may head in the future. That you have to pay to get a job. Actually, a lot of things are like that now. I'm not- I promise I won't go too much into politics, but the game is clearly satire against corporate culture, and so there's gonna be a lot of that. And I tend to fall on the side of the worker, so, you know, the game speaks to me. Ugh! Waking up! It's my daily wake-up call. All right, all right, I'm awake. I kind of want to staple an iPad to my ceiling, too, so I can do this, but that's cool. All right, couple new ship models. This is just talking about what we can do. This is fine. I'm going to skip all this. Oh, I got the... I got a sticker for completing the tutorial. Hey, Weaver! The name's Weaver. Hey, look, I'm coffee. I'm for yourself and a couple of other ship breakers in this region. And welcome to your new home. There's everything you need. <laughs> This is officially called a ready-made long-term employee habitation something or other. Around here, we just call it your hab. All right, let's start a new shift and pick your first ship to work on. It's a pretty shitty apartment, but I've seen worse. And really, the Akamura would love to be in a place like this, legit. Um, pretty tight. And so there you can see... My choice of meal, which says it's plastic free. We got some snacks and I guess it's a coffee maker or whatever. You can customize the posters if you want. There's not really much going on here. Um, what was I supposed to do? Was I supposed to go here? Oh, messages. I'm just going to skip all this. I definitely recommend you all uh, read this stuff and play the game on your own if you want to see any of this stuff. Um, oh, more environmental st storytelling. If I can get over there. When you look out the window, you can see that handprint. So whoever was in this hab before you definitely had a bit of longing to looking out over the earth and the endless space. And I love that. I love the little details in games. That's That separates the games that are beautifully polished and chef's kiss worthy versus the games that just kind of have something there to, you know, exist to fill out the world. This is more than filling out the world. This one little handprint is able to show just how kind of hopeless this is and how much the previous tenant tried and cared about his their their current situation. So here's our equipment and we can slap a sticker on our tool. We have earned a sticker, so I'm going to slap this I dub the Shipbreaker tutorial sticker right there on my cutter. Um, yeah, man, let's start a shift. So every day you start a shift by picking a ship and trying to break it. You have 15 minutes in real time to do as much as you can, and then your shift ends. And so every day is a balance between determining how much you can break and how much you can be rewarded. So looking at the ships, if you look at this one, in the bottom edge, you see that if I can get to salvage level, f or goal level four, I get a repair kit, and goal level five, I get a repair kit. Repair kits are good. Um, and everything else, I do not get a repair kit for level four. So we're gonna pick the one where I do get a repair kit for level four. Makes sense? I can handle anything this game throws at me at this point, by the way. I do want to try playing the uh, no revival mode uh, at some point, but today is not that day. 
Oh, good. Okay, right off the bat, I have the 15-minute time limit, which you can see in the very top center. Try to salvage the entire ship if you can. Yep. We call it using the whole buffalo. You'll hit your certs faster that way and start knocking out that dead of yours. Yep, thanks, Weaver. Okay. You're good people. Your Whoa, game. Whoa, okay. Everything there, is already Kurt. depressurized. Yeah, yeah. This this one's super easy, because you're... Like, I, I may have bypassed the tutorial, but it's still, like... It's still a matter of, uh... Uh, giving you really weak ships early on. Alright, so... Oop, there we go. So, this game has become one of my meditative games. Um, I play this to relax, I play it to chill out, and I've needed a lot of that recently, what with the family emergency and such. But that is finally going away. I am gonna... I thought I could break that window from out here. I cannot. So, the, the overall goal of the game is you have three buckets. That where you put stuff. You have the barge, which is where this antenna goes into, which is down there. You have the furnace, which is red. You have the processor, which is blue. Every single item on the ship needs one specific bucket. And when you put the object or material in there, you get paid. Do I have tethers? I do not have tethers. Oh boy, this is going to be fun. Um, so... The idea, then, is to try to maximize your income by putting the right object in the right area. However, because you only have 15 minutes per shift, there is going to be a, an efficient way, or a more efficient way, or a less efficient way to do it. For example, this panel mainly goes to the processor, but we can pull off the light here and put it in the barge. However, lights, specifically, do not give you that much money, and time is money, so I'm just gonna huck the whole thing into the processor and be done with it. Um, however, this panel that I am trying to lift up has this white box. This goes to the barge, and this is valuable. So we want to take that and huck it into the barge. Yeah, baby. So what this game... Oh, and you can see how much money you're making in the top left. That soft crate was worth $39,000, so that amount is added. You can see a light was destroyed from the previous panel worth $3,000. Wow, the, that was worth more than the panel itself. That's a shock. Whatever. I usually don't care about the lights. Everything else I kind of try to do as best as I can, but lights I do not care about. Never care about lights. Um... So we're just going to keep working. So, as I said, um, this is a great game. This is so meditative, so calming, and I've needed a, a nice calming game. The hardest part of the game, in my opinion, depending on... Um, well, it asks you, it asks of you several different things. It asks you to be patient because you can't move materials as fast as you want to. That is a pickup, so I'm going to not huck that anywhere. Um, it asks you to be patient, it asks you to be efficient, and it asks you to constantly judge whether you should be moving faster or slower based on how much money a given object is. And you have to kind of memorize what objects are worth the most, like this thing I've got, the airlock console, those are always worth a lot of money. So you want to put that, yeah, it was worth $84,000. You want to put that in the barge. Um, I didn't look up anything, and I think there is a, a lot of peace in this game. Whoops, I need to grab that, or will it not let me yet? Oh, it won't let me yet. Okay, that's fine. Um, I think there's a lot of peace in this game and trying to figure everything out. You always do make enough money that even if, uh, you are slow or inefficient, you will gain enough of a profit to survive your, uh, and get a profit every day. Because of all the fees that the game throws at you, uh, you are given half a million dollars of additional debt every single day, which sucks, 
Um, but you quickly learn that, like, you can make millions per day very easily without working all that hard. Especially as you get some of your later tools, which I do not have yet. And you just work. I mean, you're here to work, man. You're here for a job. I love what I call blue-collar sims. Oh, God. Thank you, Weaver. Thank you. Didn't see that. Running out of oxygen. I'm, I'm used to my late game save where I move way faster and, uh... <laughs> where my oxygen tank lasts the whole shift. Um, also, you have to buy your own tools, so I have to buy oxygen, so that adds $16,000 to my debt immediately. So, the game's about efficiency. You want to try to make as much as you can every day without pushing it too hard. And there are times where, especially in the late game, you have to decide whether it's worth sticking around a little bit. Uh, or basically going an extra day on the salvage so you can get the... Th uh, so you can fully get what you need to get. What the flip is happening here? Is this sealed? No, it's not sealed. I was going to say it's never sealed. Come on, cut, cut, cut. And boosh, 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 boosh. Ugh. I don't think I can... Hmm. You have to... You have to do some wackiness to get in there. Kind of... Kind of futz this up a little bit. So, um, yeah. Uh, for the third attempt at saying it, this is a very meditative game. Um, because I love blue-collar simulators. It's what I call any of these kinds of games where... You, uh, you are working a job, um, that is some very high range for my cutter. I think that's too high of range. I wonder if something bugged there. There we go. Now I can get in here. Oh, no I can't. Uh, cut. There we go. Now I can get in there. All right. So, um, the earliest ships in the game are very easy to handle. The other thing the game asks of you that I think would be a little tough for some of my audience here is the fact you're moving around a 3D space. Um, and there is no gravity, and there is, you know, like, as with everything else in space, there is no such thing as up. Up is relative. Left and right are relative. All movement is relative. So, you kind of have to keep track of where you are in space. And I don't mean in outer space, I mean in space, in physical space. You have to be able to keep track of where you are. And it can be a little tough. Um, usually, I can handle it, but there are times even I have gotten confused about my exact location. And it, it can take a hot minute to get used to the game. But in my opinion, the tutorial is very well done. I know I skipped it, but I think it's partly because it is so well done that I skipped it. Like, I don't need the tutorial, and I don't want to waste your all's, you all's time, that's not English, with, um, with, with how to play the game. So, we're just gonna kind of, oh god, give me tethers, man. Uh... Okay, so this is one where you have to make a decision because this glass goes to the furnace, and glass is valuable, but it's embedded in this panel that you cannot break yet, um, so you have to make a decision. Do you want to waste the panel or waste the glass? And if I remember right, the panel is worth more, so we're going to try to push this thing toward the processor, and I sacrificed the glass, but so be it. Come on. Go, go, go. Let's let's check the money in the top left when it pops up. Oh, wow. The glass was worth $88,000, and the carbon panel was not worth that much. Wow, so I should send it to the furnace. Oh, man. All right, well, that's fine. So we've cut out the first front of the ship. And the screen helpfully tells you where things go. Like on the highlight there, you see this goes to the barge. All right, Cutter. You got 
got five minutes left in this ship before they turn the lights out on you. Peter Patter. Thank you, Weaver. Um, so you never have to question it. This game has phenomenal feedback, and if you've been with me a while, if you've been subscribed for a while, you know the feedback is one of the things that I value more than anything else in games. Um, I don't care how complicated or simple a game is, feedback of yourself and your current circumstances is usually the most important thing, especially in a simulator. Now, obviously, that doesn't mean you should just have a God's eye view of literally everything in the game, necessarily. I mean, it's, you know, you, it shouldn't be 100% transparent. Like, you, if you're playing Metal Gear Solid, you shouldn't get a magical thing that tells you where every enemy is all the time without any other assistance. That's just, that's just silly. But, like, especially for simulators, even blue-collar simulators, you want the general flow of the game to be transparent. You need to know what you're doing. Copy that. Um... I'm see I'm pushing it and I shouldn't push especially with limited lives. There's always time to finish this up later. Let's uh let's head back and get some oxygen. Your hands are magic by the way. Uh pulling up my hands to uh to catch myself that is a manual action. That is not just the game. Um and uh <laughs> Uh, your hands are magic, so if you're about to slam your face into something, usually you can put your hands up and protect yourself no matter how fast you're going. Anyway, so when it comes to the basics of the game, any game, it should be easily transparent. The mechanics should be easily transparent. And they are, in the case of Shipbreaker, which is probably one of the reasons why I love the game so much. It is fantastically designed, fantastically programmed. There are... You know, and come to think of it, I haven't encountered too many bugs. I've encountered one bug um, where I died in a very specific circumstance, but it was consistent, so it makes me wonder if it's by design. It's just weird, and I was eventually able to compensate for it, so I was able to uh, not have that happen anymore. Oh, I didn't quite... Get close enough to the furnace, I don't think. There we go. Once it's once it's kind of within that metal section, you're good to go. All right, we only have two minutes left on the day, which is not recording session. <laughs> Gonna let this one go just a bit long. <laughs> Why not? Let's let's do it. Let let's fully tear apart this shit. Oh God! Oh, I let my tool overheat. I am wounded. Oh, my body. All right. Um, nope. I should be all right. Looking at my health bar down there. Measure twice, cut once. Uh, and I've got the air conditioning running, so I can't hear my game audio very well. So we're just going to go ahead and blame it on that. Um, there we go. All right. Uh, is this cut now? I... Oh, no. Got a little bit more here. There we go. Ugh, oh, I love this game so much. Um, my, my older Happy Time game was Surviving Mars. Just any game where I can play and accomplish something um, without having to think too hard, uh, just because I know the game so well. But Shipbreaker has now taken it over. Um, still love Surviving Mars. Surviving Mars is one of my favorite games of all time. But just for a little variety, I've been playing more of this. And uh, especially since having my family emergency, being able to just play a game and relax. Um, and still accomplish something without having to overthink has been great. Um, it's, yeah, it's it's been bad. Like, the, the last couple weeks of my life have been bad. And obviously, it could always be worse. You know, I'm not saying anything like that. Pain is relative, and I don't need, uh, I, I, I don't need a bunch of comments or anything about, you know, take care of yourself. Like, I'm, I'm doing what I can, I promise. I'm doing everything I can. Um, 
I'm just, it, it's been bad. That's all I'm saying. So, uh, but luckily things are getting better. And uh, we managed to make nearly $2 million in salvage, which is good. So you can see the bar there. We passed goal one. We are almost at goal two, but almost does not help us. And uh, I love the breakdown there that we've seen. We've destroyed $117,000 worth of salvage, represented by the red bar on the right as well. That's fine. You cannot, I don't believe, you cannot possibly get 100% of the ship. Because you're going to have to cut something at some point. Um, but you can see that the final goal, goal 5 usually represents about 95% of the ship, and that's all you need. Once you hit that goal, you're done. You do not need to worry about that ship anymore. Um, so we got 16 experience points, essentially, and 6 license points. License points allow us... They're, they're kind of like skill points, you could say, um, to buy new tools, to buy upgrades, and that kind of thing. And hopefully we can buy ourselves our tethers, because that'll really help out. Hey, look! Another ad. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's actually helping the channel. I'm sorry. So mid-roll ad, and then we can start day two. And we're back. Okay. Holy crap. Hello, Shipbreaker 9346-52. Lynx would like to share the following inspirational message. Make the most of your shift by fanning the tiny sparks of effort into flames of profitability. <laughs> The flames of profitability. All right. Oh, God. 535,000 extra in debt. Part of that is interest. Um, then there's the nightly genetic backup, the bay lease. Oh, so much money, man. But we made a profit. We made a $1.4 million profit chipping away at that $1.2 billion of debt that we've got. All right. Time to start day two, baby. Well, actually, no. First, we're going to see if we can upgrade the equipment. See if we can get tethers. Um, I, in fact, I don't remember, let's see, push module, grapple mo grapple license, to, oh, I already have that, I see. So where, when do I get my, when do I get my tethers? Level four. Oh, okay, we're already rank three, so that's fine. Um, that's weird. I think I just started with that because I skipped the tutorial. Uh, so... Start of a new day, we can scrap the ship now and get a new ship if we want. But again, it's based on your salvage goals. Like, there is nothing stopping me from saying, fuck the ship we were working on, let's grab something else. But I still want the rewards from this, and there's still salvage to go. So we're going to continue the ship we had. Um, and that pop-up is just like, are you sure? But with flavor text. So, new day. Um, we're gonna buy some more fuel. And every day, every day, man, you want to start off buying new fuel at first. Um, eventually the tanks, the thruster fuel tanks, will be much bigger. But this early, man, you may as well buy it. And the prices, at least for me, even being in a real world setting, the prices uh, of getting new supplies every single day seems a little um, pricey. But, like, your debt is already so high that it's really not that big of a deal. <laughs> so, you may as well do what you can uh, to get... To make sure that you are ready for whatever the game... Or whatever your salvage operation throws at you. Yep, so this is for the barge. It's very heavy. Nearly a thousand kilograms. There we go. It's on its way. So... Um, there are going to be all sorts of discussions as well with the game about what is the most efficient way to do things. There are leaderboards in case you actually have some sort of competitive streak in you. Um, one cool thing is they do have leaderboards for races, which is where you have to... I think every player has one specific ship, and then they time it and do salvage. I haven't done it yet, but it's, it's interesting. It's an indirect competition, like... It's not like you're playing a friggin' MOBA where there's a hundred players there all trying to compete. Um, that would be obnoxious and kind of ruin what I believe is the point of the game, uh, which is the piece of it. Did I... Is this already free? Oh, wow. Okay. Huh. 
That is... I thought there were, um... There were structural points across the top of the ship, but I... Either I cut them already, or they weren't there. Ugh, these newbie ships, man. They're not very difficult. Which <laughs> is a redundant sentence I just said. But it's fine. Alright. So there are also little hazards... Like, this thing is a fuel tank. If you shoot it with your cutter, it explodes into fire. And that can ruin your salvage. It can ruin your face. You know, you want to be a little cautious. One of the cool things about the game that uh, you don't find out until the credits is that this game was inspired in part by a YouTube video about real-life shipbreaking. Obviously not, you know, spaceships. Not like this. But real-life ships um boat ships you know <laughs> boat ships water ships and how dangerous that work is uh nowadays especially with current technology so i keep meaning to watch that video because i want to see i i mean it's just fascinating it's a really fascinating career Something I would never be able to do in real life. Like, it's... Guys, I, I play video games for a living. That tells you the the amount of effort I want to put into my <laughs> occupation, if I possibly can. All right. Come on, baby. Come on. Go to the processor. Go to the processor. When tethers are finally introduced, Weaver, your foreman, says <laughs> they are your best friend. And I was... When he first said that, I'm like, all right, we'll see. And boy, howdy. Are they your best friend once you unlock them? Alright, so we yank this off. This goes to the barge. Very heavy, 1,200 kilograms. So my uh, grapple hook is a little... It's not liking that very much. Okay. So that's all for that side. So we're gonna kind of zip on over here. We're almost done with the ship. We'll easily be done today, as in in-game terms today. Um, so, if you've made it this far, thank you. I One of the things I do with the channel is I'm constantly checking the numbers, possibly, arguably, too much. Um, but when it comes to things like uh, the viewer um, retention, that's something that YouTube really pushes us to worry about. So, I, I keep wondering whether it's better to do shorter videos or longer videos. Historically, on YouTube, it is better to do fewer but longer videos, which requires less work. And it seems like that shouldn't be true? Like, just, you know, we're taught that l more work is better. And on Twitch, that's definitely true. On Twitch, you basically have to stream six to eight hours a day. If you're going to make it up in the upper tiers of Twitch. Um, however, YouTube is not Twitch. And uh, I personally am trying to reduce my workload more. So, if longer videos but less frequent videos actually help the channel, we'll probably start moving in that direction. Alright. So, I've done that. Ah. I did not catch this antenna the first time. Boosh. Um, okay, we can get rid of this. Oh, before I just activate that, there's usually a device that lets you separate the engine from the... Uh, ooh, I don't know if I can cram myself in there. Hold on a minute, let me... So... The game is one part improvisation, like this, because I didn't quite plan this out properly. So I'm going to have to cut it like that, and then enter from the bottom. Boosh. And then hopefully separate the engine. Oh, the engine isn't even here. So usually there's a little boosty... What the f Oh god, running out of oxygen! Oh jeez. Damn it! Why do I keep not paying attention to that? Ah! Oh, with no. There we go. 
Hurry, 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 hurry. Yep, hurry, 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 hurry. Oh, ho, ho. <laughs> Guys, if I ever stream this game, which I am planning to do at some point, if I ever stream this game, uh, usually we do no backseat gaming. Um, if I ever run low on oxygen, please scream at me in the chat. Like, legit- Fuck. Here in the comments, just start screaming at me to go get oxygen. Maybe I'll remember one of these days. Damn it. Anyway, usually, there's a flipping engine right here that you have to separate from the, uh, from the, uh, the thruster cap. There is not this early, so I don't have to worry about it. So we're just gonna do that and do that. And thruster cap goes to the processor. Boosh. Uh, I think that was aimed properly. Okay. Huh. All right, let's kind of duck in here. Grab this part. Yeah. All right. And so there are also these things. You can pick up things like thruster fuel from the ships themselves. Um, that'll save you a little bit of money. It's it's more convenient than money saving. Um, hashtag no spoiler, but you don't need to worry about the debt as much as the game pretends you need to worry about the debt. It makes sense. Um... Because the debt gives you a goal to pursue. And because without the debt, you know, there, there's nothing you can do. I find that debt is a really good, if maybe a little too easy, of a plot device to keep you going uh, for any of these blue-collar sims. So, like, for example, you take a game like PC Building Simulator, there is no debt. You just show up to work and you, you make... You repair a computer. I mean, that's not bad. That, that's that's the point of the game. But what I'm saying is there's no impetus to keep playing. Like, you show up, you build a PC, you go home. That's it. There, there's no impetus unless you are an achievement hunter to keep playing the game. Once you've had your fill of computers, you can put PC Building Simulator away and you're fine. And I think that's why... That game specifically came out with a couple expansion packs. Oh, that goes to the processor too? All right. this is oh, well this whole thing goes to the processor d then, so I don't even need to cut anything else off of it. Yeah, the only thing I would need to do is lighten the load, but I don't need to do that. Um, so with PC Building Simulator specifically, they added the modes like uh, the eSports expansion which is where you go through a a very short career of an esports team um you know you need or cert some players myself included especially who are not good at making their own fun or are at least more goal oriented need to be to have some sort of reason to keep playing and in this game the debt system ah see get your repair kits these stock up I did not do this the first time through the game, so I, uh, I left a lot of money on the table. Um, so, the debt in this game simply serves to drive the story and give you a reason to keep playing. Um, so everything else here goes to the furnace. I don't know if I can move the entire thing, so we're gonna cut this in half. I'm gonna try to hurry... Because, um, see if I don't, th this is where, this is where it gets a little tricky. If I don't hurry up and finish this in the next three and a half minutes, then I'm going to have to waste another day, which means adding to my debt. But maybe that's what I'm going to need to do. Oh, oh. oh, it's still attached somewhere. Uh... Where the hell? Oh, there. Alright. 
Okay, now are you attached? You are still attached. Where are you attached? Oh. There we go. Nope, it's still attached. I can tell it's attached because of the weight down there. Um, on that lower section it says the weight... So when you point at a specific part, the the number in brackets on the right is how much the thing you are pointing at weighs. So this aluminum panel is 422 kilograms. But then the total weight of all the attached structure is the number to the left, which is 4,352 kilograms. So no matter what I'm pointing at, it says 4,352 kilograms. So everything is still attached somehow, which doesn't make any sense. So you know what? We're going to go ahead and call it a day. There's two minutes left, but I don't think I can solve this in two minutes. So we're going to just call it into the day. Oh, God. Break, 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 break. <laughs> I'm used to my better thrusters in the other... Uh, in my side, f or my personal save, so I'm not used to moving so slow. <laughs> That'll save us money on the oxygen that I didn't have to buy. But we're close. You see, there's only... So, this is a good... This is a good um, example of judging for yourself whether to keep going or not. This is one of the things the game asks of you. There is $666,000 remaining on this ship. If I take another day to do it... I'm pretty much breaking even because with the amount of debt that is added to your account every single day, I'm not going to get that much out of this. However, however, my goal here was not the money as much as it was the salvage goal. And I want that repair kit and I want the 16 MP and I want the 12 license points. So we're going to go back in one more time. And I, don't worry, I won't put an ad here. Hey! All right, well, now that we're rank four and can buy friggin' tethers, this will take about five minutes. So, yeah, no no, no other mid-roll ad. Don't worry about it. We're going to get this done real quick. All right, yeah, new ship that I can make. Hazards electricity. Great, got it. Yup, okay, let's... Uh, let me clear those emails because nothing drives me more insane than unread emails. Um... Cool beans. All right, so we're going to go buy ourselves some tethers, which are by far your best friend. So, uh, handheld grapple, tethers. Yes, baby. Give me those tethers. Give me those sweet, sweet tethers that will turn this from a what would have been about a five to ten minute job into about a one to two minute job, what with the tethers and such. Okay, so... It is my distinct honor and privilege <laughs> to introduce you to the rest oh. of the crew in our sector. Oh, thank you, Weaver. Sound yes, off, introduce everyone. me to everybody, please. Hey, Rook. Name's Lip. I was the worm until you showed up, so thank you. Now I get to do the hazing. Great, thanks, Lou. What are you talking about? We don't do that. Welcome aboard. Don't listen to her. I'm Dee Dee. Oh, yeah. Hey, uh, I'm your mic's still messed up. How about now? Better. Oh, hey, I'm kind Wait, of was that door the connecting piece? Mike's no, it wasn't. Huh? What the fuck? Oh, yeah, still waiting on the wreck. Uh, oh, I didn't even see this bar. I'm sure they're working on it as fast as they can. There we go, now the ship Cutter, is cut in half. I added you to the sector comms channel. It can get lonely out here. Helps to check in with each other from time to time. All right. Enough chin wagon. Let's get back to it. We were out. Goodbye. Bye. Later, Rook. Bye, folks. Thanks. Thanks for chatting. All right. So this is the magic of tethers. So in real life, they use very thick metal cables to do this. But uh, the tethers have their own pull strength, so you just tether shit up, and then you let gravity, or, well, physics, do the rest. So there we go. And that should be the rest of the ship. 
No, I'm still not a goal five? What? What is this? That's a suit patch kit. How have I not finished the ship yet? Oh, the fuel tank didn't get all the way into the barge. I see. Because if it, if it had, it would have disappeared by now. Um, that's where it is. Boosh. Yeah, it's so heavy that my little pushy-do is not pushing as do as I can. There we go. There we go. Salvage goal five reached. Unlocked a sticker. And now I can go back to the hab after just a few short minutes of my shift and have a crap ton of money as a result. So I'm going to try to get back. Yeah, baby. And boop and boop and boop. Done. Done, done, done. Give me that sweet, sweet $100,000. <laughs> but more importantly, the repair kit and the experience points. That's what I really needed. All right. So that's going to do it for today. Um, I am going to play a second episode of this since this went long. We'll do another long episode of this. Kind of like a half, two half streams, except they're not actually streams. Yeah, wow. $99,000 came off of my... <laughs> that is not much in this context. Anyway. We'll do another episode of this. I want to see how the numbers are, because if there's a lot of demand for this game, I will play the shit out of this. I will play it to completion. I will play... I... There was... The day after I discovered this, no lie, I... Like, I was feeling down because of an incident that I don't want to talk about, uh, kind of behind the scenes of the channel. Um, and I fired this up to try to make myself feel better. I planned on playing it for maybe one ship. Um... I played it for 14 hours straight. Not healthy. Not healthy. But it was a really fun day, and I enjoyed it. So anyway, that's going to do it for today. If you want to see more of this, let me know. I will stream the crap out of it, but we're going to do at least one more episode. So thank you all very much for watching, and I will see you again. Yeah, I can point it down. Because of the webcam. For another episode. <laughs>